Welcome to Cloud Stories, where your host, Heather Smith, interviews some brilliant minds from the Zero ecosystem and beyond. This show shares stories from our community, developers, cloud integrators, and users, Zero solution providers, business consultants, accountants, bookkeepers, and people riding the cloud. Together we gain a 360 degree insight into this evolving phenomenon. We pick up tips, tools and tactics from stories shared. We understand where the pieces of the puzzles fall into place and in turn we can propel our business to the next level. Now here's your host, the very curious Miss Heather Smith. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Cloud Stories. Today I shall be talking to Chris Wheatley, the founder and director of Scope Accounting. But before I do that, I just want to remind you of some upcoming episodes in this podcast. I shall be talking to Cameron Priestley from Trade Gecko, which is a startup zero add-on solution based in Singapore, and they have an online inventory solution that plugs into Zero. But back to my guest for today. Today I'm speaking to Chris Wheatley, founder and director of Scope Accounting, a full service accounting firm. And Chris has recently launched this business. So looking at uh, talking to him about the story of actually starting his own business. And I'm sure we'll get some inspiration from him. So welcome, Chris. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Lots of work to do, which is very encouraging when you just start out. We've just taken that big leap to go out on your own and in our, in our greater industry. It's sensational. That sounds fantastic. Now, I've got to start with the very important question up front. Chris, who is your favourite superhero and why? I'm a Batman man. Oh, Batman. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a little, I don't know where he came from, but if you could see my office and he's followed me around, so those who have worked with me previously, I've got a Batman, which I think I got from like a Happy Meal or maybe from... You know, just from like a Happy Meal type thing, not that I buy Happy Meals, but he looks over me. <laughs> so you office. stole it from some poor child who had a Happy Meal if you're not buying the Happy Meal? I bought a Happy Meal. So <laughs> I, I kind of, you know how Seinfeld always had a Superman reference? Yes. So, so Chris Wheatley, Stoke Accounting, always has a Batman reference. Ah. And I remember seeing the first Batman, the Michael Keating one? Yes. As a kid, and I fell asleep. So I think that, that kind of moment when I was six has kind of stayed in the back of my mind. Yes. Uh, and obviously Christian Bale is awesome. So Batman. Did you like the cartoony like Batman shows? Yeah, I definitely like the, okay. the mid nineties one. The one yes. that has the voice who was the guy who was the same voice as the Batman ride that was down at Movie World. Okay. That, that, that voice is Batman. <laughs> Okay, for listeners from overseas, uh, we have a, a movie world down in uh, down on the Gold Coast, the bottom like of Universal Studios. Yeah, yeah, set, yeah, exactly, like Universal Studios, and it's called Movie World, and it has a Batman ride uh, as well as many other rides. Now, Chris, why did you? You've just recently started Scope Accounting. Why did you start your own uh, accounting practice? Well, it's logical progression for the for your skill set for your client. In, for your client interactions and the industry lends itself to it. And in this day and age, I guess that's why we're here. The barriers to entry are just so low compared to what they used to be even mm. even five, ten years ago. Yeah, but so that, not everyone goes off and starts their own business. Many people are happy to stay as an employee in practice, as a partner in practice for years and years and years. What inspired you to start your own practice? Was it the low barriers to entry? Low barriers to entry made the meant I still slept at night mm -hmm. while preparing for it because obviously they can't, you know, when you're doing anything with a, um, with a fresh baby around and you're doing anything that is a major financial move, the, um, you know, the ease of startup is obviously a great concern. What made me do it as opposed to those other kind of career options as, a, as an extrovert in an introverted industry, why the hell not? Now, you mentioned your baby. Maybe we can share with our listeners, maybe if you're, <laughs> if you're willing, maybe share um, your age and uh, your baby's age. I'm 32. Mm -hmm. And well, which you could have worked out by saying that I was six when I saw the first Batman movie in 1988. <laughs> and 
my little man is nine months old. Interesting. You're starting out new accounting practice, 32 years of age with a young family on hand. So it's kind of a very busy period in someone's life with a young family on hand. You've only recently started the business. What challenges have you faced? Knowing that if you don't work, you don't get paid. Yes, which is a you know, which is a common self-employed issue that I raised with clients back in my previous role. That you know, no one's paying them the penalty rates for the public holidays, for the bank holidays. No one's paying their their annual leave. No one's you know, mm. if there's no money coming in from you not doing the work, there's no money coming in. Yeah, absolutely. So we did have a bit of a buffer and. And a, and, a, and a business credit card that gave us a bit of breathing space at the start of it. But obviously that was a great concern that, you know, it might be a while until, you know, m- revenue starts flowing in. Yesterday was a public holiday where I lived. I knew I had to work and that was fine because I've got the work to do and, and, and I'm sure clients appreciate working when the, you working when you know that, when they know that you don't have to. Yeah, it's a bit of a shock to the system that you're, uh, you're working you can be working on holidays and and public holidays when you are running your own business. And I know I had the conversation with my husband this morning that we both got the flu shots and get them every year because if we don't work, that's it. We don't have income coming in. So we we need to, uh, we need to go out and spend that 20 minutes to get that flu shot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You need to invest in, in yourself. Yeah. Yes. Just make sure you've got the time. Yes. Where did the name Scope Accounting come from? This is something that my sister, who is my graphic designer and I guess my marketing team, for lack of a better term, said that I should have a canned response to. I'm still working on that canned response. <laughs> I wanted something. I wanted a, a word. I didn't want a semi, well, it's a like a new age name that you see, a, a, like a accounting legal 2.0 name that you see a lot of people have these days and and I won't go into specifics for obvious reasons Mm. but there's a lot of names out there of new firms and even people who are changing from the Wheatley and Associates to another name they go to a name that's just too too like they're trying to be something which they're not they're still an old-fashioned accounting firm they're still Mm. old-fashioned lawyers but they're trying to have a funky new name and I just they're chasing a trend yeah, they're tracing a trend. Mm. Trend because what happens in a couple of years' time when you know when when the feature wall isn't fashionable anymore, you paint over it. But yeah, if you're doing a renovation, but it's your business name. You've got so much goodwill and you know intellectual property, intellectual value tied to that. It's yes. a good name. Yeah, yeah. No. Back in my mind, and also knowing that yeah, we're we're in, we're all in small business, but I guess as a accounting business services, you're in you're in a bit of the base for small business. You know, could I would I be doing something in in my forties, in my fifties? What's a name that I could transplant across to other industries? All right. Yeah, with, without restricting yourself. Without restricting myself, yeah, because scope, <laughs> scope accounting. What specifically kind of focused me on that was. What do you do? You've got a scope of work. I can help you with the scope of work. There's, if it's on my scope, if it's on my radar, we can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, there was a reference to when we were doing the brainstorming, a kaleidoscope. And oh, okay. that you can see, you can see a bit of a kaleidoscope in my main logo that my sister, sister did. And because I, as a precursor to deciding the name scope, um, I'm just a big, big advocate of staying dynamic in your business, being always changing, always adapting. And I guess, you know, cloud computing lends itself to that. And knowing that kaleidoscope always changes or, you know, it's never the same. It's kind of like a, um, like a snowflake. All snowflakes are unique. I'm not too sure what they really say there. But they do. <laughs> yeah. I'm an accountant. But a kaleidoscope's the same thing. You're always changing. You know, just turn it a little bit and you get a different view. Just turn it a little bit get a different view okay so that is is where we were going with scope and that's is probably where when my marketing and i guess branding really ramps up i'll be position be sloganing positioning myself yes so did you opt not to call yourself kaleidoscope because it's too difficult to spell yes <laughs> and i don't really wear that that many tie-dyed shirts so i thought i thought it might attract the wrong type of client <laughs> yes it might do <laughs> so chris 
What cloud solutions do you use in your own practice? I use Xero mm-hmm. and the associated suite so at Workflow Workflow Manager. Workflow Max, I think it is. Workflow Max, yeah. Okay. yeah. Practice Manager Workflow Max, yeah. I am starting to use the um, share site, which is the... The stocks. The, yeah, 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 the stock management one. That, yeah. was, that was good. I had a live client that I could, who's, who's a mate, that needed, needed a solution. I said, well, you know, here's one. Now, can I, Chris, you've mentioned three products there. So you've talked about ShareSite. Now, ShareSite, for the people listening in, is a share portfolio management solution, and that plugs into Zero, the main accounting solution, but it also plugs into Zero, the cash book solution, which individuals may use just for their own personal budgeting. So it plugs into both personal zero solutions and business zero solutions. I didn't, that sounded a bit advertorial, but I just wanted to summarize and explain that for people who are listening in. And from my perspective, I just hear glowing reports about ShareSite all the time, which is what you're sharing as well. Can I take a step back? And I know a lot of people listening in will actually have an appreciation of zero, but why do you like zero? Can you kind of sum that up in one or two sentences? It's really easy to teach someone whether they've got a debit credit background or not. You can just, like, there's no hand holding. It's this short introduction, it's a short orientation process, whether yes. it's a client, as another professional, or, you know, as, as a staff member. Yes. And you're good to go. Like, as long as you know how to use a mouse and you get basic <laughs> web, web page logic about you know, clicking, double clicking, you know. Yeah. All that, as opposed to a standalone program where, you know, keyboard shortcuts mean so much. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it is interesting because I know that uh, I, I train zero and I find a lot of the hurdles are actually around people using a browser and that they keep going, Zero's shutting down on me. And it's like, well, no, you're shutting your browser down. And yeah. they would repeatedly shut their browser down five or ten times. So it's good for people who are like us, like advisors and accountants who are introducing to people to zero to be aware that they may need to talk to the, the people that they're introducing to it about browser techniques. Yeah. Google Chrome over Windows Windows Explorer and like that. Like that's a basic Yeah. That's a basic thing that I don't think you know, as soon as you get told that IT web people prefer Google over like the Google yes. software, you know, Google Docs over Microsoft. Yes. And, and then you realise, all right, well therefore they're going to write stuff. You know, I'm not a software guy, so yeah. you know, don't hunt me down. <laughs> For recommending a browser, I know you've just opened up a huge can of worms and people are going to, people, the Safari people are going to now come and attack you in their drives and the Firefox people, your life is basically over, Chris. I'm a Samsung man. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no, people are very passionate about their browsers, definitely. As soon as you realise that it's, that the people behind it built it using one particular format yes one particular viewing medium mm. use that viewing medium like yeah it just makes your life a hell of a lot easier absolutely it sounds like you recommend viewing uh, your online solutions via google chrome and uh, that's my default choice for my browser as well it wasn't a year ago but now it is i'm just noticing facebook works linkedin works <laughs> Even the new web-based Outlook, you know, the old Hotmail, yes. works, a lot, works a lot better in Google Chrome. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. You mentioned that you're using Workflow Max in your business as well. Can I also ask you to explain what Workflow Max is? I've actually uh, not, I know of this product, but what, how do you use it in your, what is it? How do you use it in your business? I think simply in, in a term that would adapt over to other industries would be it's the CRM. Okay. Engine for for your accounting firm because you know zero doesn't have the full tax offering at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't have everything. You still need other standalone tax logic programs, asset logics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. So Workflow Max is I'm still building it because obviously it's um you know eight weeks into my enterprise. Yes. Um, I'm still getting all the information right, but. It's essentially that that one point CRM, do your billing out of it and it feeds into zero as well so that you have the one the one database, I guess. Yes. 
And my understanding of the product is while it's very focused on the accounting industry, it can actually be used across many different other industries. And I know people, say, working in public relations who are also using the product. Yeah. yeah. Like the, I think it was originally a like an engineering or like a software engineering program that Zero acquired, and obviously Zero can correct me there. Mm. Um, so it's, I think the concept is any professional services that has a timesheet. Yeah. Not, not that I do timesheets, but I think that's the, you know, if you have a job. Job have, costing. Yeah, if you have a job and you have a job costing that is time dependent as opposed to, you know, as opposed to manufacturing cost mm-hmm. accounting. Time dependent it's, job costing for, yeah, okay. Time yep. dependent job costing. It's, it, it's there for you as the, you know, probably one of the first things to, things to examine. Mm-hmm. So thank you for sharing that that information about those uh, three different products there, Chris. Now, there are a growing number of new solutions in the Xero add-on eco space. What tips do you have for those solutions to get in front of accountants? How do they get in front of Chris Wheatley? And how can they get accountants to know about those solutions and recommend them? Granted, other than ShareSite, I haven't looked into anything Mm-hmm. With the serious intention of subscribe of buying of, of buying mm-hmm. as a firm at the moment, so you know. I'm... So, h- how should someone get in front of you? How did ShareSite get in front of you? I've got an interest in the field, technically. Yes. So, did you explore it, or did you? Did they? I think it was there. They were at a um, road show. Yes. And you know you're just walking around, you know, with your with your free cake and mm-hmm. coffee. <laughs> oh, look at this! You do tax reporting for for listed for shares on the Australian and international stock market. Oh yeah, I like that for clients. Mm. Let's talk. And that was it. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I, so I, I, I don't know how they would know. You know, we all need that kind of stuff. We all need the CGT, the capital gains tax reporting with share with share with so, the tax base. Yeah, so anyone who's in shares, it, it's of benefit to them, that particular solution. Yeah. But, like, I, and I, I don't know of any other, I'm sure there are out there, but I don't know of any other similar type products. Okay. No, that's interesting. I think that uh, I think the space and the number of solutions has definitely grown dramatically yeah. in the last few years. For myself, I normally go to, like, I will meet, say I meet Chris, you at an event, and I say, Chris, what solutions are you using at the moment and what would you recommend that I need to know about? And I will go uh, and that will be my question that I will ask people. And I recall, I think it was, I think it was actually a New Zealand bookkeeper and she was like, yeah, you, you got to know ShareSite. you got to use that, that, that solution. And it sounds like we're, we're doing an advertorial for ShareSite. But it's from it's someone not, actually. Yeah, th- this is not an ad for sure. <laughs> if, if they want a half my monthly subscription. They can <laughs> but it was a person, a user's recommendation in terms of yeah. that. That's what pushes me to, to actually have a look at it and have that confidence to then go and uh, recommend it to another client. But I do agree it's very difficult out there. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I've got a couple of, as you know, Heather, I've got a couple of coffee shop clients mm. and they all started off with one POS system, yes, which, which they run off of their run off of their iPad. Um, you know, it'd be better if it ran off of a Google, off, off of a um, Samsung ten point one, but that's all right. You know, <laughs> um, we can that debate to later. Um, but they haven't been really, and it's one of the main the main POS solutions know, systems. But no, no, I don't really love it. So if I have another client that says, you know, oh, you know, we're doing this, we want this, rah rah rah, we want a POS solution. Yes. You know, because these other clients are using it and they're, they're young guys, so they've done their own research and they just, they're just using it because it's, you know, might have been up the top of the list. Yes. But because they're not completely happy with it, it's not my first yeah. recommendation. So, yeah, I suppose like being, making sure that you do, making sure that the program does what they say they can do. Yes. And it's always difficult because there are parameters that you don't consider when you're investigating and researching 
a, a solution. So you don't you don't consider what do I need to do um, if I need to refund someone. It's not sort of something that you perhaps uh, you contemplate, yeah. and it's difficult to sort of gather all of those questions together and then ask them to do it. Um, uh, and like, like, how are they pushing the information across into zero? Are they pushing it across individually, or are they going to batch the information? And does that yeah. and does that suit the? But does that suit what you need it to do? I know I just went into a business and they had it all set up, and they had this whiz, be, whiz bang kid um, who came in and set it up, but I. I but I was like, well, wait there, you've been operating a week and you've already got 10,000 invoices. Well, wait there, this, you know, this is not 10,000, but it was like it was going to grow very quickly to 10,000. And I'm like, you're going to hit uh, the uh, soft API limits on that. You need to contemplate that. So it is very difficult to research these products and know that they meet all of your requirements. And also they're evolving very quickly as well. So while they didn't meet it last week, they may meet it this week. So Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, moving on from that, Chris, what is your relationship with, uh, as an accountant, working with bookkeepers? I had a coffee with one of my main bookkeepers yesterday. That was a, that was a good last-minute what are you doing? I'm, I'm over your side of town. Let's have a coffee. So that was that was good. I definitely um like yourself included, Heather. You know, a lot of you know if you don't like tax, but you don't want to be an, a back office auditor or whatever. Yes. You know, bookkeeping or you know some type of managerial accounting, whether that's like a root of like a basic bookkeeper or you know otherwise level. Yes. Yeah. You know, makes sense. And. And you leave the tax stuff up to people who, who, who don't mind being called, you know, it's, I like to think us tax guys compared to the bookkeepers as, as you know, you know, that, that mate with a ute, the mate with a pickup truck. Yes. Who you, who you think, all right, I got to do a dump run. I got to move. I'm going to ask that guy <laughs> to drive me to, to help me move, to go to the dump for me. Yes. Being a tax accountant versus a bookkeeper, a management accountant, it's the whole, oh, you're a tax accountant. You can do my tax return. Mm-hmm. I can, but I don't want to. I digress. You were talking about. <laughs> so you have a positive relationship with bookkeepers. Yeah. Is that what I'm getting from that? And, and you work with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and um, you know, it's a, it's you know, both on a commercial, you know, it, you know, referrals swings both ways, but also from a, uh, you know, just from like a grade of peer group. You know, it's the same industry, but it's from a different perspective. A, Different perspective, yeah. Yeah. Different, different part of the small business services advisory. Sort of complements the small business. That's what they yeah. need. Yeah, like especially if, if they're if they're a business that needs it, and they're, you know if they're a bookkeeper that's been around for a while, you know they've seen they, they're on the front line of it. They're on the front line of what small businesses complain about because most accountants probably don't even go to their small business to their clients' premises once a year or every two years. Yeah. But a small business that's big enough that they need a bookkeeper, the bookkeeper's at least going in once a quarter. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I, for one, think that accountants should work to build a, a strong relationship, I think, but between from both ends. There should be a strong communication relationship there and a strong respect for the people there. Uh, yeah. Because people are doing complementary roles, and at the well, at the end of the day, most people I know who work in the management accounting or bookkeeping space, they want the best for the small business owner, and mm. the account, the tax accountants want the best for the small business owner, and sometimes uh, they don't communicate that well enough. But yeah. yeah, yeah, well, that that's a common, like the communication, even when it is a don't hate me out there haters. You know, the bookkeeper to tax accountant role is, you know, and don't hate me, people. Oh, you know, God. It's, it, it's, it's a doctors to nurses kind of role. Yeah. Yes. That, like, that, and like, yeah. I come from a family of, like, of nurses and my brother's a doctor, so don't. Yeah. Don't no, but, but it is a, a, a specialist role and the nurse is extremely important and yeah. the doctor is yeah. extremely important. And for our listeners, they will have uh, listened. Our earlier guest was Gail Buchanan, and she calls herself the numbers nurse. <laughs> so, but but they both have very important roles, and they are both necessary for the operation of the small business relationship. So, I think it's important that there's a respect there. And if they're not working well together, the patient 
loses. Suffers, and, yeah. Yeah, and again, you know, you can, you can extend that to if your accountant isn't working well with your financial planner or, you know, if you have a mortgage broker or if you have a, a lawyer because they, you know, because they're a little bit territorial about certain aspects of it, well, you as the client aren't getting the best result. And, you know, use the analogy of your doctor not to, not talking to your... Um, Nurse. To a specialist. Not yeah. Even, not, yes, absolutely, yeah. Physio, your, your orthopaedic surgeon looking after your new hip. Like, if they're not talking together, if they're yeah. not working together, you, it's pointless. You know, you're probably paying... You're paying more. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're paying paying um, for, for you're paying for more if they're not talking and they're not working well together. And uh, and if they are working well together, it, it is really wonderful. But uh, yeah. let me go on. Now, I, you might have already, uh, no, maybe not. Maybe you've answered this, maybe not. What cloud solutions do you recommend to your clients? So maybe you don't have many there because you said you don't don't recommend that many of the add-ons. So maybe you're just simply recommending zero. Yeah, like if someone has always done their own bookkeeping internally, and whether that's the reluctant wife of the tradie or or otherwise, yeah, like you know, zero just makes sense if they if if they don't like any if they don't like any of the others or if they don't naturally speak debits and credits. Um, I wouldn't say I don't recommend any others. I just okay. Have, I just haven't come across. Yeah, I just really haven't gotten into that space yet, and yeah. that's just through lack of lack of time more than anything else. Like my business is in zero, and as more and more live data gets into it, I'm going to, I guess, you know, use myself as the case study for, you know, for, for the fathom reportings of the world for the mm. um, for those for those reporting solutions <laughs> solutions. Yeah. And the budgeting and the cash flow stuff, you know, just the base, you know, the basic um, financial management tools. And then if I know of someone that has a, you know, like a business that I'm intimately involved in from a, you know, from a client point of view, go in there, actually go, all right, well, you've got, you've got a bit of an inventory management issue here. Yeah. Let's use this. Let's yeah. try this. So I, I think it's more about um, when I when I'm ready, and I know you know people say you know not, you know you're never going to be ready. You might as well just jump into it right now. Well, you know, it's timing. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's not when I'm ready. It's all yeah, It's all about timing. I got to pay the mortgage first. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's nice when a client comes to you and they've sort of perhaps done their own research and they say, I'm using uh, Stitch Labs. Can you come and have a look at how this works? And you need to go in and and. You have the opportunity to go and learn it then, but uh, no, that's it. You are in early days of starting the business, so um, it's something about uh, getting in front of people um, and, and identifying those needs. So, yeah, yeah, needs analysis. <laughs> yeah, needs analysis, exactly. So, what would you say to the business owner are the benefits of using an accountant who utilizes cloud tools? So, the business owner who's out there listening to you, what are the benefits to him of using an accountant? Who is leveraging off the cloud? Well, not that not that price is everything, but you know, you're using you could be or you, you potentially are using the same database, the same numbers. You're putting the numbers into the same system that the accounting that the accountant's using. Maybe many maybe a lot of small business owners don't realise that the typical accountant in Australia at least yes. gets the gets the clients data. Source data, whether that's Maya, QuickBooks, Reckon, Zero, any of the industry-specific reporting programs. You know, we've got a few, yes. few in manufacturing and um, you know, plumbing and all of that. We get your, we get your data. We get your profit and loss. We get your balance sheet. We get your general ledger accounts. And traditionally, we've retyped that in mm. our reporting software. Yes. Yes. And then we go do what we need to do. Well. If it's cloud, and if you're using, if the if the reporting, you know, the financial reporting, balance sheet, profit and loss, and that is is sufficient enough, and your data is, you know, your data, your client data is good, whether you've done, you, whether you've done the bookkeeping yourself or or a bookkeeper's mm. coming and done, mm. and where the accountant's using it as their end reporting tool, yeah, wow, like like that's just that's just. For, for a decent size 
client. That's just eight hours off the off the bill. Absolutely, yeah. And I know my accountant for my very small business. He uh, he pushes. He publishes the fixed asset depreciation, which works within zero. He publishes that. He checks it against his own system, and it's like three cents off. And we do this every year. And he goes, "Oh, we can cope with three cents." And um, he then pushes a button, exports the data, and imports it into his system, and it just it, it works seamlessly. And he says it it stops about four hours work, and that's just on a small business. And for as you're saying, on a large business, you're saving eight hours work, and that's eight hours that they're going to bill you for that. Um, so there is a massive uh, time cost saving there. And 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 that's where you know, and that's where if 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 my old world compatriots don't realize that wow like I'm, I, I look forward to servicing from their clients in the in the near future <laughs> definitely well this leads on to another good question uh, another this leads on to my next question not I won't say it's my good question this leads on to my next question so you took the leap you started a new business Chris where did you find your very first client at a bucks night at a <laughs> At a stag night for, for those North American um, that is, listeners. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I want to know any more? But that's sensational. You found your first client at a stag night. Well, sensational. Well, well, you talk about stuff and you're with, and I suppose this is a generational thing as well. You know, there aren't very many, you know, I, I hate the term again. I'm, I'm, I hate lots of terms. Gen Y business services accountants. But, you know, when you get talking and, you know, there's a lot of small businesses out there that, well, that are all, you know, young guys and mm. young guys in their, you know, in their forties even. Yeah. And they, they don't want their dad's accountant who's about to retire. They want a yeah. young accountant who's going to retire after them, or, or who's going to go through the same, not, yeah, not make business issues, but the same personal issues as them. Mm. And, and and this is actually one of the things I recommend to people when they say to me. What should I look for in an accountant? I say look for someone who's a similar age as you because they will grow with your business. And yeah. as you said, yeah. if you're 30 and your accountant is 50 and while he may be very vibrant, etc., he's going to be retiring in that 10 years perhaps and then yeah. you're going to have to refine, recommit and get in a new relationship because it is a lifetime relationship. And I know uh, my, my own father who operated as a solicitor, he had his clients for years, like for years, like thirty years, and that's what you want when you you have that that relationship with that accountant. You want them to be in. A, you want to be in that relationship with them for decades. And finding someone who is of the same age as you is a good thing. So it's, fun, uh, it's fundamental to that. Well, yeah, I, I think it's a it's a smart decision to make, and that, that that's a, a niche market for you, Chris. <laughs> People the same age as you. <laughs> So moving on, maybe you've already answered this, but what advice would you have for someone looking to start their own accounting practice? If you think you can, why not? Like if you, you know, what, what's the worst? A few, a few peers were saying this. What's the, what's the worst thing that happens? You just go and get a. If you're at that level where you know you've got some client gravity, mm -hmm. and you know that you know, even though you know that you don't know it all, you know who does fill in those gaps of knowledge, whether it's from a basic accounting or or from any other field yes you know you, you've got the network already established yeah which, which i did um you know if you know that you can deliver to the client if you you know if you know you know you've got there's no ifs or buts if you know you can deliver to the client why not like the worst that happens is is after after six months after 12 months or whatever your exit strategy is you merge merge yourself in with someone else and yes. You might not bring in thousands, of, hundreds of thousands of dollars of clients, but you're at least more attractive for that senior manager role mm -hmm. at a small or suburban firm than than the guy next to you, who's not bringing any clients. Mm. And and that's and that's the difference between a hundred grand, or one hundred thirty grand a year bringing in clients. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, starting your own business is such a huge learning curve, and. Uh, maybe you've come across it as well. I know that um, I sometimes speak to these people who are in the big four accounting firms and they're management consultants and they're charging themselves at very high amounts. And then they go off and they start their own business. And like eight, you know, eight weeks later, where, where you are now, they're like, 
oh my goodness, I was going in and giving advice and I actually knew nothing and, and I've actually gained so much knowledge just in this process, which is what you've done. And you um, have so much more of an appreciation of what that small business is going through, is missing out on, needs to be reminded about, um, yeah. and, and, and just the number of hats that they're juggling and that if you say this to them, you perhaps need to say it to them several times over because it's just turned into white noise because they're worried about a shipping container coming from China, they're trying to get their kids to school, they've yeah. got insurance worries and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so it is a massive learning um, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you think that all you're going to deliver to your clients is what's in a textbook, yeah, you like, you know, you, you you don't preach to them out of a book. It's the it's the application. It's the it's the feedback. It's the mm. getting them in the right headspace before, keeping them in the right headspace after, giving them that after sales mm. service to, which you know a lot of people might not associate with professional services, but you know you're just not selling them the wise words of wisdom once. No. Uh, some people say that uh, I know that uh, when I was talking to Gail, I've mentioned her just before, she sometimes feels like she's a marriage counsellor as well as a bookkeeper because uh, you end up dealing with so many different aspects of people's lives. Yeah, definitely. I just got off the phone with someone who was calling up. Um, it's her business, but she was calling up because her husband wants to buy a motorbike. <laughs> and I could tell I could tell that she did not want the motorbike for the safety reasons and yeah, you have to put that disclaimer there. I'm not I'm not appropriately qualified to have the conversation which I think you want to have about, about whether or not your partner should go off and get a motorbike, but I can tell you that there's no tax benefits in it. So Yes. <laughs> so that's that's a reason uh, I guess I'm on the negatives about yes. him getting a motorbike. Yeah, no, definitely. It's those those multiple conversations. So, Chris, you've been in business now for eight weeks. Yes. What goals have you set for yourself for the next three months? Next three months? Next three um, months. Involves staff members. Mm-hmm. I thought that staff members would be a 12-month plan, but things are progressing very nicely. Mm-hmm. So I believe three months is, is a staff member and I know that that staff member won't just be an extra overhead that'll, you know, won't add value. It's all about, you know, getting the work done, getting the work done sooner. Yes. So it's a, what's that, that makes it a volume based business, you know, from a, from, from like a consumer good point of view. So yes. The more work you do, the more work you get through and the, you know, happier clients are because the work's done. Yes. So I know that you know, staff members is a three months thing. And where where I am now, I am borrowing office space from a good friend of mine who's also in small business. He does computer stuff. Yes. I don't know if when I get a staff member, that means that I have to go out and find somewhere myself because that's that could also be a like an add-on to, there you go, add-on, no pun intended, <laughs> to getting an extra staff member to get through the work quicker. They're the two goals. So possibly yeah. office space and a new staff member. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, maybe we can revisit you again uh, and speak with you again in about three months' time and see where you're at with that and see how the business is, is evolving. Definitely. So, Chris, I've, I've got one more question for you. What would you say to a 17-year-old about to leave school who wants to be the next Chris Wheatley to found an accounting practice and live the dream? What would you say he should do? Um, what colour hair does he have? Is he red? <laughs> he may be. All right, well, there you go. That's, that's one tick in the right box. Okay. Um, well, if you don't speak the language of accounting and I know like accounting people think the bean counter but it's we need a different term for the greater industry because it's business advisory business services I don't know like we need a better term for it mm -hmm. but if you don't speak the language you're not going to do it I know I know heap I know a few oh, I want to say heaps I want to say hundreds but not that's not right I've come across you know in all my jobs you know either bookkeepers, clients who are entrusted themselves with this role or, or other accountants that just don't get it. Mm -hmm. 
they wouldn't get it if they were auditors. They wouldn't get it if they were insolvency. They wouldn't get it if they were, you know, financial reporting roles in a, in a listed company. So they need to feel it in their gut. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it's a language, you know, and it's, you know, it kind of runs parallel to economics and banking and finance. Mm-hmm. If you don't get the language doing like you know if, if you think you're good at math well there's no math in it it's all computers do it all for you if you think you're good at math and you're good with numbers and you're smart go and be an engineer you'll earn more mm-hmm. but if you if you speak the language and yeah. you enjoy the client interact if you enjoy the interaction with people who, who want to pay to listen to you yeah great like this this applied business yeah there you go applied business science accounting economics advisory kind of stuff Yes. So you need to feel it in your gut and uh, look towards doing it that way if that's the way you feel. But don't just do it because you're good at numbers. Yeah, because it is, a, it is a logical game. And if you don't get that logic, you're going to have a massive hex debt for nothing. <laughs> you're going to have a massive student loan debt for nothing. So. Sensational. Thank you uh, very much, Chris, for talking with us today. This show is sponsored by Rental SaaS. Rental SaaS is your end-to-end rental management solution, enabling you to keep track of bookings, hired items, and manage your inventory. Rental SaaS integrates seamlessly with Zero. Contact Siva and his team at rentalsas.com for further information. If you want to get in contact with Heather Smith, please visit her website at www.heathersmithsmallbusiness.com. If you wish to find out more about XU Magazines, contact Tether at au at xumagazine.com. You've been listening to Cloud Stories. If you like this podcast, please download it, share it with friends, share it on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and social media. And one more thing, can you leave Cloud Stories a five-star rating on iTunes? Thank you.